I still don't get why you think that for the Rockler Bentwood challenge, you can do a tamper door. Because it's going to bend. What are you talking it's about? It's not even really bent wood. It's it's one piece of wood that is cut into strips. You're not bending anything. It's going to fit in the groove. The little router dado. Really? Really? Why don't you just admit that you suck? You suck. Admit that you, you suck. suck. Jesus. What's up? This is Crispy Cowdog, and today we're making this single bottle liquor cabinet with a timbre door and bent lamination legs. I'm starting off just here in the tiny shop, measuring up the carcass for the build. This is a vertical setup, so I want to be able to fit one bottle and two low ball glasses above it. I'm just using a circular saw and speed square here to get everything cross cut roughly before then taking it to the table saw for a final trim. With the tops and bottoms cut to size, I'm going to hand cut some dovetails here. This is a variation on the Rob Cosman method that I use, and I'm a big fan of his dovetail marker as well. I'm just going to start by laying out my tailboard and then using the table saw to get a slight rabbit on the inside of the carcass. If you want a proper video on doing dovetails, check out Rob or Stumpy Nubs or Jonathan Cass Moses. There's a bunch of videos out there that are a lot more informative and a lot more foolproof than mine. As I said before, I do a little rabbit on the inside corners of the carcass, and the purpose there is to not only hide some of the imperfections that happens when you're sawing, but also to give your chisel a little something to rest on while you're paring out waste. Now a couple of dovetail tips I can give are when chopping out waste to go about halfway from each side and be very very patient with your layout. The more time and attention that goes into the layout, the better success you're going to have. I also like to fine tune things with a file until I get a proper fit. It's a little bit easier than using a chisel to try to pare things down. And even with that, some mistakes do happen on occasion still. And here I'm just getting the dry fit together. And as you can see, everything's pretty much money. And here I'm going to cut the back panel, which is from some resawn mahogany, and I'm also going to use that same material for the timbre door itself. Quick pro tip is to make sure that when you're using a feather board, especially one of these hedgehogs, that it's facing in the right direction. Um, here I'm lining it up, and then I realize it's backwards. So as I said, from that same resawn mahogany, I'm going to cut these strips for the timbre door. And I'm just using the feather board as a stop block to get equal width strips. I want a continuous grain, so I'm just making sure to keep them all in order here before making a timber jig out of some leftover plywood. The timber jig itself is pretty simple. It's just three quarter inch plywood. I'm using some melamine to create a little frame around the timber strips. And I'm making sure that everything is nice and square and lined up before brad nailing everything into place. There's also these little wedges here which were cut so they can be tapped in to apply pressure and get the strips tight in the jig. As the backer for the door, I used a piece of duck canvas cut to size and got a regular iron heated up on a medium heat setting. I also went back and wrapped the wedges in tape because they were going to be near glue and I didn't want to risk the idea of it sticking to the back of the tamper door. 
Then I'm applying the glue to the strips before putting on the duck canvas and using the iron to help the glue set. As you can see, my domestic skills here leave a lot to be desired. I'm not very good at ironing. When the glue was eventually dry, I tapped the wedges out and rolled the door to make sure that the glue hadn't cured between the strips. And as you can also see, my rolling technique is far superior to my ironing technique. Then back at the table saw, I trimmed up the ends before sanding the timbre and going through a variety of different grits all the way up to 220. I also used a little more scrap to make a corner jig that is going to be a template that I'm going to route against with a pattern bit. I applied some double stick tape and mounted that corner jig to the top and bottom of the carcass and also taped it down to my workbench. Then using a plunge router and that pattern bit, I routed the track for the timbre door. Using a quarter inch straight bit and a fence, I also routed a groove for the back panel. I also routed some grooves that are going to accept some coasters, which will double as shells. And those are all cut from some leftover pieces of the back panel. If you're really into watching me do repetitive actions or you like what you see, like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a build. If you want to check out more of my daily content, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, as well as my podcast, which is available on all major platforms. To square the dados for the shelves, I'm just using a similarly sized chisel to knock the corners out. Then with a piece of scrap paduk that I'm going to use as a little handle, I used some wood glue and a couple dabs of CA glue and activator to attach it to the door after a dry fit. And here I am just going to town burnishing up the card scraper in real time speed. I'm a really big fan of card scrapers and I love getting that nice sheared surface. Sheared surfaces tend to be a lot finer than most sanded finishes that go all the way through the grits. I'm also then going to use some 600 grit sandpaper as a little final brush and get it all in between the grooves of the timbre. To start the bent lamination process, I'm going to cut some strips of white oak on the table saw from some scrap all to about 1 16th of an inch thick. And here I'm just going to use a mixing tray and soak these strips overnight. I'm trying to get kind of a tight radius here, so I'm going to pre-bend them around a coffee can as a form, using these spring clamps just to hold everything into place. And after another 24 hours, I'm then going to glue them up around the same form using the same spring clamps. After a full cure of about one day, I'm going to then go back to the table saw and just trim up one side using a bevel jig, and I'm also going to trim up the other side as well once I have the reference. And in a very classy way, I'm going to fill in the voids with some quick and thick glue and some sawdust before trimming everything again to even height. Then everything got sanded on the surfaces as well as the inside radiuses on the spindle sander. And I also used some brushing lacquer for the coaster shelves as well. And after that fully cured and sanded, I did a little quick research and development to make sure that my coasters were working with a nice whiskey break. Since this is my submission for the Rockler Bent Wood Challenge, it is only fitting that I use Simple Finish from Maker Brand Company. I assembled this for a live charity auction with the Salvation Army, so having a quick drying finish like Simple Finish was a must. It's literally a wipe on wipe off finish and I finished the inside of the cabinet first before glue up and assembly. 
I also rubbed some paste wax on the tamper door track and I'd show you that, but... Then I applied simple finish to the outside of the cabinet as well. And I fixed the legs to the carcass by pre-drilling and then countersinking some holes in the legs before mounting them with brass screws. And then we're done. This is a bit of a gimmicky project, but I really like the end result. The timbre door was a fun experiment I'd never tried, and the cabin itself has a very Danish modern and mid-century modern look to it. Thanks for tuning in, and see you next time here at Cowdog Craftworks.